ready. This is the moment. It's touchdown. Go, go, go. It's a bit gloomy, isn't it? It's not very welcoming. Have you got anything more upbeat? Forget it! Forget it! Forget it! Forget it! Oh, I'm so excited, my tinkle is fizzing. Oh, sorry about that. We really are useless over here. It's one of the reasons we needed your help in the war. I decided that first of all, I'd show the new Mustang around. So I headed for London, which is the capital city. This is Tower Bridge. Interesting, it's very, very old. But it folds completely in half, so that in the old days, the horses could go through. Now that's the Houses of Parliament, which are a series of houses in which we keep all our idiots. That clock thing, that's Big Ben. I know it's not what you call it, Big Ben, but we couldn't just call it Ben. And that, is the cenotaph where we remember those who died fighting for us. Slowing down a bit here. Show some respect. No idea what that is. Wasn't here this morning. I know that's a cyclist. You want to be careful of those small but very angry creatures. That's the army. They're the ones who shot at your white house. Sorry about that. Having seen all of the sights, we headed out of town, so I could do this. There it is. That is the soundtrack that Britain has been missing for 51 years. Real American V8 muscle. We just don't make cars like this on our side of the pond. All that lazy but determined talk Squeeze the throttle in any gear at any speed. And there's an inevitability to the way it moves off. It's like arm wrestling a solar system. You're gonna lose. It is weird, driving a Mustang from this side. It's like suddenly changing your mind after 50 years of marriage and sleeping on the other side of the bed. It's also weird driving a car with a big V8, reversing camera, air-conditioned seats, rain-sensing wipers, that you can buy for 37,000. That's half what you'd pay for a BMW M4, half. Once we were in the countryside proper, I continued my sightseeing tour. Look, I've drawn your badge on a hill. Jeremy did that one. Sorry. Eventually, we arrived at Stonehenge. That, you'll be amazed to learn, is an ancient calendar. Four o'clock. Lord Church. My tour of Britain was then interrupted by an unwelcome arrival. Ah. Oh. What are you doing here? Well, I have come to remind you, because you've obviously forgotten, because you're too giddy, that we have no need for the Mustang in Britain. Because if you want to spend, what, 30, 35,000 pounds on a fast fort, you'd buy a Focus RS, because that was designed for here. No, you'd settle for that in the UK because you couldn't buy this, but now you can. That is the point. That's but what I mean. Would you wear chaps? No. 
because we have trousers. What about cowboy? Oh, you are cowboy boots. Well, it's appropriate, isn't it? I'm welcome. Listen, I don't want everything from America. I just want the Mustang. Amer Stupid. No, America. It wasn't designed for here. Would you wear a Stetson? Well, it's no. cold out, I'll wear a Stetson. No, you'd wear a bobble hat. That's a bobble hat. Oh, you. No, hang on. I just realised. What? Um, I, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm sorry, this is my film, my tour of England, and I didn't want him spoiling it. This thing's bloody awesome. Listen to that bellow. This thing squats on its haunches. This is what it's built to do. Every crackle, pop and bang is just connected to every synapse and sinew in me. Oh, no. This is like a first date for me. And on a first date, you don't want a fat, Balding uncle tagging along. So what I'm going to do now is lose it. It's hammer time, shock and all. <laughs> I've only got 2.3. Is he going twice as fast? No, he is not. Corner coming up. Now, there's no need to panic anymore in a Mustang because, for the first time, the Mustang has independent rear suspension. <laughs> the cornering speeds this thing can achieve Beggar belief. Oh, oh, how does it grip that well? <laughs> I'm in a car chase in a Mustang. I am Steve McQueen. Sport mode, which makes the exhaust pop and bang. Oh, mine! <laughs> oh my god! Flat out, yep. Yeah. It still grips. What is the point of traction control on this thing? It's like putting a nymphomania control on a nun. How did he get away from me in something from the 18th century? Especially when I'm driving what is basically a turbocharged barnacle. This has the most sophisticated four-wheel drive system fitted to any car. Not even a Nissan GTR could live with this. The Mustang, well, that's for cruising down the Pacific Coast Highway, listening to Don Henley. This is for storming up the Stelvio Pass, listening to The Clash. But while it's a grippy, technological masterpiece, it still has the blue-collar character of its ancestors. In many ways, this reminds me of the old Escort Cosworth, and that was a great car. I actually had one in the night, so I called it Gary. It started every morning and it always went, do you want Sam? It was just John Terry, really, with windscreen wipers. Meanwhile, having got rid of the ape, 
I was back on my sightseeing tour. This is our Cheddar Gorge. Obviously, it's not as big as your gorge. The Grand Canyon is bigger, but well, it's longer and deeper and wider. Mm, but it doesn't have any cheese in it. Why can't you just leave me alone? I'm just saying, everything in America comes with cheese apart from the Grand Canyon, whereas this canyon does come with cheese and it's delicious. Here, have some. I don't want cheese. It's better than Monterey Jack in a tube. Can't You're you ruining think? this. No, you are, because you are telling everyone that the Mustang is better than the Focus. Well, it is. Oh, it isn't. It is. No, it isn't. Look, I'm not saying this is perfect, because it isn't. There's a vertical choppiness to the ride, which is annoying. If you put your phone in the phone holder in front of the gear lever and then accelerate, it shoots out and goes under the seat, you never see it again. Petrol tank, way too small, and the styling is a bit... yobbish. A bit? But, Hammond, look at this. Oh, yeah, you're right. Half a century of Mustang history, heritage and pride, but it hasn't got a small plastic strip on the door in case you're a bit clumsy. No, it's brilliant, that, and this is faster. Well, no, it isn't. It is. No, it isn't. It is. It isn't. At this point, I decided to abandon my tour and head for the nearest airfield to teach Clarkson a lesson. Right, I've got 410 horsepower, that's 100 more than him, but there's something else on here that's missing on his focus, and it's this, line lock. So engage it, press OK to initialise, initialising, initialising complete, firmly apply and hold brake to engage, engage, press OK to begin. What that's doing is locking the front brakes so I can warm up my tyres. Is an ideal feature for people who wake up in the morning and think, do you know, I've got too much tread on my tyres. Yeah, I'm doing that automatically. What a moron. With my tyres warmed up, I took my place on the start line. Right, race mode, launch control, overboost facility on the turbocharger, four-wheel drive, and a man with lightning reactions at the wheel. This car is going to boing off the line like a spring lamb. Launch control, first gear, and we're ready to go. control in the world! Come on! Come on, Jeremy. Come on. You're winning. Oh, really him in? <laughs> no, no, no. That's simply impossible. Now, bless it for trying. Things I don't want to see right now, number one. So, uh, I won then? Yes, but your car doesn't have a drift button. A what? A drift button. What does that do? Well, you push it, and then when you go around the corner, the car drifts. Does it? Yeah. Do you know what? I'd love to see that in action. I'd love to see you doing that. Yes. I'll watch. Yes, I'm going show to. me. You stay there. Oh. You will not. Even James May could drift this. Here I, we go! I can't wait to watch. <laughs> Check it out, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Drifting. <laughs> Look at that, Hammond. Look at that. Hammond? Hammond? Hammond! <laughs>